Hi, I'm here to help you apply the metaphor of the iceberg, to help you make the distinctions between the different levels at which you address climate change in no matter what domain that you work in. You're going to write down an example of how you address climate change and make the distinction between responding and reacting to events, to being proactive and anticipating things that are coming down the pipe, and then also investing in the structures and the different mindsets that will create an entirely different future. Overall, you know where the leverage is. This is about helping you build your clarity and your commitment to action. As we explained in the first iceberg video, we approach addressing climate change at different levels that represent a gradient of where to find leverage. First, we respond and react to events, the impacts of climate change. We are also adaptive and proactive as we anticipate patterns of behavior over time. This is about adaptation, about resilience. And we can create new things and be transformative when we address the systemic structure and mindsets. We create a fundamentally different future by changing things at the root cause level. This includes work to mitigate climate change by reducing greenhouse gas emissions and doing it in deep ways. This could mean creating different rules or incentives or changing our mindsets and our beliefs. For more on all this, watch the iceberg video number one in this climate leader series. You can also read this really good article by Danella Meadows called Leverage Points, Places to Intervene in a System. It's a really good article that goes much deeper into many of these issues. And you'll notice in this paper, uh, Dana Meadows identifies 12 different levels of the iceberg, really. Uh, we're only gonna make the distinction between two in this video and in this exercise. But to go deeper, read Dana. So do you see it? Number one, deal with things. Number two, anticipate things. And third, at the bottom of the iceberg, create a different situation. We're going to put all the actions in the patterns of behavior and systemic structure and mindsets together, however. So in this exercise, think of that bottom of the iceberg as one big level. Let's look at a few examples. In public health, think of AIDS or cholera or diabetes. Number one is the top is treatment. This is reacting to a diagnosis. And two, planning for future needs. This is adjusting for the symptoms and future treatments that are needed. And third, prevention. When possible, this is taking action that avoids the risks of getting the diagnosis altogether. Or we can think of an electric utility dealing with climate change. At the events level, Restore power after natural disasters. Got to put the fire out. Got to deal with the situation that's there. Below the water line, in the pattern, structures, and, and mindset section, we can put a number of things. Planning for alternative water cooling sources for power plants when droughts and heat waves hit. Planning for peak air conditioning use in warmer weather. Emergency response planning. To affect the systemic structure, we could create incentives to drive energy efficiency, making it profitable. For mindsets, it could be meaning instilling a company culture that saved energy through efficiency and conservation is better than building a new energy supply. And as a last example, think of a neighborhood dealing with heat waves. At the event level, treating people who show up at the hospital during a heat wave. At the adaptive and transformative level, planning for the next heat wave, making sure there are rehydration supplies and places to cool off, insulating homes so people can use less energy to cool their homes in heat waves and also use less energy all at the same time, organizing communities so that people know their neighbors and can help in a heat wave and support each other during the rest of the year. Okay, now it's your turn. So take a piece of paper, maybe with your friends, a really big version, kind of like this, or you could download one from our website, use one like this on our website, a little piece of paper if you're doing it individually, put it on the wall, put it on your desk, and write down all the things that you're doing and think about where they fit in the iceberg. You could think of this generally as your overall organizational business response or community response or a national response to climate change, 
Or you could pick something very specific, like flooding, or like my electric utility, or any other simple kind of clear project or clear scale. Now write down everything you do or considering doing somewhere on the iceberg. At the top, put what do you do to deal with the immediate impacts of climate change or this aspect of climate change? Then below the waterline, how do you prepare for the coming impacts? How do you prevent future climate risk by reducing emissions? Once you've written some things down, I want you to circle the three things in the lower section that you think have the highest leverage in terms of changing the system and avoiding the patterns of behavior and events you don't want to see. These are affecting the drivers of the system that you are working on. If you do the exercise, it might end up looking something like this. There's a lot of words with some projects that you're doing at different levels of the iceberg, and then several things circled where you think those are the highest leverage. We've done this exercise with thousands of people, and there are several pitfalls that we want you to avoid as you do it. Pitfall number one, don't get hung up on which section or exactly where things fit. Just get things down on a piece of paper and use it as a conversational tool. Pitfall number two, don't get hung up on thinking that one area is good and one area is bad. Of course, we need to deal with the implications of climate change. It's here. And we need to focus on those things that respond to or that help us be more proactive and anticipate the future. The point is really looking cr critically at the balance between these areas. Number three, don't let perfect be the enemy of good enough. Write things down, use it away as a way to think and to talk with others and get on with the work. And now some words of encouragement. This is best done in a big group. So having a huge piece of paper on a wall where you get people from different areas of your organization or of your community to maybe write down on post-it notes what they are doing and then place it on the iceberg or write on the big sheet of paper. That's a really good way to proceed. Do this with other people so you learn what they're thinking about and how they use their different strategies to get the results that they really want. All right, go for it. We're really interested to see what you come up with. So uh, do the exercise and share the results and uh, let's make a world that we really want to see.